G'day guys and girls, today I want to compare these two powerhouse cameras from Fujifilm, the X-H1 versus the X-T3. What suits my needs and what is going to suit your needs? Let's go and find out and roll that intro. Yo, g'day guys and girls and thank you for joining me today comparing these two powerhouse cameras from Fujifilm. I've owned these two cameras for one whole year and I want to do a side-by-side -side comparison on what suits my needs and possibly today what suits your needs from the Fujifilm family. But if you're new to this channel, I'm Matthew Storer, a landscape and travel photographer from Australia, taking you to new undiscovered places around the world and photographing this journey as we go along. So if that interests you, after this, drop below and subscribe for future content. A little bit of background information about my photography, travel, and what I use these cameras for specifically. My main aspects are travel, adventure, and landscape photography. So these two cameras suits my needs absolutely perfectly. What the X-T3 suffers at, the X-H1 picks up and throws its punches right back in to cement its spot for the Fujifilm family. The X-T3 I use mainly for landscape photography. It is absolutely perfect for capturing those images and it's got incredible video specs which we're going to find out today. But everything I don't use for landscape photography, I use this for a secondary camera, travel videos, travel photography and that adventure style. There's two main reasons why I use this and we're going to find out today. And also, every camera's got its downfall which we're about to find out. That is what we're going to dive into today. Video, landscape photography, negatives, positives and what suits your needs. We're going to have a little walk discover what these cameras are good for, so let's get going. Right, so the video aspects of these two cameras, I wanna break this department into two main key points, the travel side of things and the professional video shooting. Now, in every aspect in this video side of things, the X-T3 basically dominates the X-H1. Of course, it is an older model, so it really should, but it's only six months older. 400 megabytes compared to 200 megabytes, a 265 codec compared to a 264 codec, 60 frames a second compared to 30 frames a second at 4K. You're probably thinking right now, the X-H1 stands no chance. But coming in round six in the boxing match, it throws a massive right hook because of the in-body image stabilizer, something the X-T3 does not have. And for me personally, is a huge benefit. The reason behind this is because the two aspects that I spoke about, the professional side of things and the travel side of Video for me is a huge percentage difference. 70% for travel and YouTube compared to 30% for the specific professional videography. So the freedom and versatility that X-H1 can give me with the in-body image stabilizer, I don't need to shoot at 400 megabytes per second. I shoot at about 100 because of YouTube compression. I more want the storytelling of what the X-H1 and the in-body image stabilizer can do over the high quality that the X-T3 can. But for my professional side of things, chuck this on a gimbal, on a tripod, and it excels in mostly every department than the X-H1 does. So this for me, the video side of things, is more for the documentary or someone that needs to work with a gimbal. This is gonna do an absolutely fantastic job. But the ergonomics, the hand grip, the in-body image stabilizer, and still the fantastic features out of the video it does an absolutely great job at 4K. The only thing I will note here is the 120 frames per second because of the new X-Trans sensor on the X-T3 does do a better job for me. So for me, I have to give the win for my personal needs, even though the X-T3 is better in most apartments, the needs of the in-body image stabilizer suits my travel photography style videography needs. So for me, the X-H1 is a clear winner here. The 
Okay, so moving on to the photography side of things, we're starting with the X-T3 because this is my main go-to camera for photography. So a few things with this, it has got a newer sensor, the X-Trans sensor, 26 megapixels, and it does have better AF performance, which isn't really a huge effect to me because I manually focus in pretty much 90% of my images. Then also, it has got the difference with the lower native ISO, so 160 compared to 200 ISO. But this is basically my go-to setup for photography for the X-T3. Lens, camera, and tripod, because it hasn't got that either setup. So it's not a downfall for me because most of my photography is done with a tripod. I talk a lot about owning a tripod, and you can watch up here seven reasons why every landscape photographer should own a tripod, and it's because I can lower that native ISO to 160, I can get the composition down packed and capture the image in. So for my photos and landscape photography, it doesn't bother me that it hasn't got in-body image stabilizer. But now I want to move to the X-H1 with the photography side of things, because that's where it changes a little bit more. Okay, so the X-H1 is a very different ball game when it comes to the photography side of things. I set my main camera on my X-T3 set up on a tripod, and the X-H1 is my backup or secondary camera but it's not a backup secondary camera that sits in my backpack. Paired with the image stabilized lenses and the 5.5 axis image stabilizer built into the body, it allows me to walk around and capture unique images. So while I'm getting the hero shot with the X-T3, I'm allowed to do with the X-H1 the same at 5.6 aperture, not raising my ISO because I'm allowed to shoot at lower shutter speeds because of the image stabilizer. So I can see pictures like this, zoom out to 200 mil and capture that image because of the image stabilizer. Still shooting at 5.6 at 200 mil, but combining the image stabilizer and the in-body image stabilizer, it's a very big game changer. Now, not just in landscape photography, but in travel photography or my professional side of things, this is really cool. In low light, I don't have to raise the ISO because I can guarantee that I can shoot about 140 to 160 shutter speed with that bump in that and increasing the noise. So this is a complete game changer when it comes to the photography side of things. Okay, so here we are finally looking at these two cameras directly. We've compared the video aspect that allowing me to walk around with the in-body image stabilizer, the YouTube and content where I can hold it and film myself, but the better capabilities out of the X-T3. So yes, the X-T3 has got a newer sensor, 26 megapixel backside luminous sensor, better in low light, better AF performance. It's quicker, it's much more better performing than the older sensor but also in built into it, the video aspects at 400 megabytes, the codec, the Zebra, we can go on and on about how good this camera is in that aspect. But also the X-H1 got a really good feel to the body of it, the ergonomics, the buttons on the back are laid out so much nicer. The in-body image stabilizer, that huge king punch back at the X-T3 with the X-H1. But I want to add some downfalls that both cameras have battery life. The battery life in both or all Fujifilm cameras is really, really bad. Especially with the X-H1, using that in-body image stabilizer, it chews for the battery a lot more. I've seen anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes less out of a battery when recording in 4K, which is not very good. But also, the 120 frames a second in the old sensor of the X-H1 is not great either. But getting onto the X-T3, what do I find negative about it? Obviously that in-body image stabilizer, the battery life, as I said about all of them, but also the ergonomics of the grip. It doesn't feel good to carry around all day, every day, especially if I'm out shooting with travel or with clients, I'm using to try and get as many images as I possibly can. So what suits my needs? The big question, what suits my needs? If I had to choose just one camera, what would I choose? It would be the X-H1. If I had to choose to suit my needs, one camera only, what would it be? The X-H1 for sure. And let me explain to you why. When I'm traveling like I did to Egypt earlier last year now, the X-H1 was my go-to camera. 
I was doing travel videos for it, so I was about to handheld. I was doing low light photography at sort of that dawn dusk time, I was able to handheld. Walking around all day just taking travel images. Whatever it was, I found the X-H1 was the camera that I relied and grabbed on. The only time I look at this camera is when I do sit down vlogs because of the eye detection for uh, the autofocus and for landscape photography. That is it. This wins all the time. And let me tell you this, when I go on a professional shoot for paid clients earning good money, this is what comes. Can you believe it? Now my question to you today is, let me know in the comments below. If you had to choose one of this, the X-H1 or the X-T3, what would you choose and why? That is the most important thing. Why would you choose it? For me, the in-body image stabilizer and the ergonomical grip of the X-H1 outweighs everything of what the X-T can do for me personally. Remember that, that's for me personally. But guys, that has been done for today. It's getting late, it's getting cold here. Thank you for joining me on this one, but let me know what would you choose. I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.